What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here. I got a very in-depth video. You know when you see some of my videos and you think, hey man, can you get a little bit more in depth? You kind of just glazed over that topic. I want to know all the details because I'm concerned with my gains. I want to make some results. Tell me more. So usually we have three to five minutes, maybe six minutes are the length of the videos, giving you the big basic overview, but not this video today. You see, this is a big topic. We're talking about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibular hypertrophy, uh, two very distinct topics, two very important topics if you want to make gains. I made a video a couple years ago that quite honestly the data is outdated and it's my responsibility with trying to provide you guys with the best possible info to admit when I'm wrong and then provide the correct information. So rather than just give like a three to five minute summary of what's going on, how you could apply it to your training, I got my boy Greg Knuckles who did a whole lot of research on this topic to go very in depth. He has an article, the link is in the description. You can check out also his channel on YouTube, link also will be in the description. But he's and talk about all about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, whether it exists or not, and what it means for you if you just want to make some gains. So sit back, relax. If you're on the toilet, just chill on out. Give this video a like, like for knowledge, and I will let Greg take it over. Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here from stringtheory.com, and today uh, I have a video for you about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Um, so if you're not aware of, of kind of this uh, debate that's going on, uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is the idea that as your muscles grow, the ratio of total muscle size to contractile proteins within the muscle can decrease. So you have more sarcoplasm, which is uh, cytoplasm inside the muscle fiber. So uh, that would be water, glycogen, organelles, uh, sarcoplasmic proteins associated with anaerobic metabolism, a bunch of stuff like that. So uh, that's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibrillar hypertrophy is uh, as the muscle fiber grows, the ratio of total muscle size to contractile proteins would stay the same. So uh, this is this is a, a debate that's been raging for a while. Does sarcoplasmic hypertrophy even happen? Can it happen? And uh, what its overall relevance is? Uh, I wrote a really long, like excessively long, but hopefully good article over on my website really looking into the science of whether or not sarcoplasmic hypertrophy can take place. So if this is a topic that interests you, you should check it out. Uh, I think I'm pretty confident it's the most thorough look at it anywhere, um, but that, that could just be me being overconfident, but it's pretty good. Anyways, so, uh, but what I want to cover in this video is why this doesn't really even matter. So. I left a lot of space over on this side of the screen, just so I can put some numbers up here, uh, to make the case that um, regardless of whether or not sarcoplasmic hypertrophy takes place, let's just assume it would. Um, strength athletes are nervous about this uh, affecting their results. So if sarcoplasmic hypertrophy takes place, if they gain muscle, but the ratio of total muscle to contractile proteins decreases, they're afraid that's going to make them weaker and less competitive in strength sports. So they'll lift less relative to how much they weigh. But uh, so what, what I want to do in this video is make the case that that's really not a relevant concern. Okay, so I'm just going to use an example to help to help make this point. So these are just illustrative numbers and I'm using nice round numbers to make the math easy on me. So. Uh, we're going to start with someone who weighs 75 kilos, 165 pounds, and they have a total of 600 kilos in the squat, bench, and deadlift. It's 1,320 pounds. Now, the average person, or the average male, uh, about 40% of their body weight is muscle mass. Um, so this person would have 30 kilos of muscle, so uh, that's 66 pounds. So 30 kilos of muscle, total of 600 kilos, it's obviously the muscle that's lifting the weight, interacting with the nervous system, blah, blah, blah. So that person currently lifts 20 kilos per kilo of muscle they have. So that's their starting condition. So uh, let's just assume they gain 15 kilos of muscle, a bunch of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy takes place, and that new muscle, uh, due to the, the decrease in contractile protein density, let's say it's only 50% as strong per unit of volume as the original muscle. So 15 extra kilos, uh, it was 20 kilos per, uh, 20 kilos lifted per kilo of muscle mass before. So it's 10 kilos lifted per uh, kilo of muscle mass now. So 
at 15 kilos, that's gonna bump their total up 150 kilos. Okay, so now they've gained 15 kilos of muscle. It's half as strong as their original muscle. Um, and so now they weigh 90 kilos and their total is 750 kilos. So uh, they weigh 198 in pounds and their total is 1,650. So uh, what does that get them? Did that uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, did that weaker muscle, did that really screw them over in any way? And no, it didn't. Uh, even if that took place, their initial Wilks would be 427. They'd have 427 Wilks points with their uh, original total of 600 kilos at 75 kilos of body weight. And with their new total, they would have a uh, 478.8 Wilks um, with their new body weight, and uh, just to keep their Wilks the same, so gaining those 15 kilos, uh, to keep their Wilks the same, they would have had to total uh, 670 kilos. So only adding 70 kilos to their total, uh, 154 pounds to their total, with a gain of 15 kilos of muscle mass. So for that to take place, for them to have the same Wilks while gaining 15 kilos of muscle, uh, instead of the muscle only being half as strong, it would be less than a quarter as strong as the initial muscle. And uh, there is some evidence that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy can take place. That's not really what we're discussing in this video. Uh, again, check out the article if this is a topic that interests you, the nuts and bolts of it. But um, even, even if sarcoplasmic hypertrophy can take place, uh, the overall effect that it can have um, would be much, much smaller than that. So, uh, you know, you may be looking at a decrease in uh, myofibrillar density of maybe 10, 20%, thereabouts. Uh, but here, like for, for this scenar scenario to take place, for you to gain that much muscle and it to not improve your relative performance in powerlifting, uh, <laughs> you'd, you'd be looking at the new muscle being only uh, less than a quarter as strong as the initial muscle, which is for all intents and purposes, impossible. So uh, yeah, that's that's basically this video, um, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. It's a really interesting topic. So head on over to String Theory if you uh, want to actually dig into the science of whether or not it takes place, maybe some of the things that can influence it. Um, but just know that if you are a power lifter and you're worried about, uh, you know, if if sarcoplasmic hypertrophy takes place, is this going to screw me over? Is it going to uh, mess up my relative performance? Like, is, is this new potentially weaker muscle per unit of volume? Uh, is that really going to make me less competitive? And no, it's not. There's really no conceivable scenario where adding muscle, regardless of its myofibrillar density, uh, is going to be a bad thing. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a really cool issue from a scientific perspective, but from a practical perspective, uh, it's probably not something you really need to spend any time worrying about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you check out my channel as well. It's full of fun, nerdy, strength-related stuff like this. So uh, thanks for watching, and thanks to Omar for giving me this opportunity to have a video on his bomb-ass channel. All right, thanks. Well guys, that's a video. Sometimes you gotta go in depth when it comes to the topic. We never have to talk about this topic. Literally again, we covered every single thing there is to know about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Thank you, shout out to my boy, Greg Knuckles, for doing the video, for providing that information. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. You could check out the article that he wrote. Link is in the description. And I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. <laughs>